There are errors, gaffes, and flubs, and then there are whoppers, the type of blunder that brings demands for heads to roll. So just how badly does a reporter need to botch a story to justify getting fired? One AP reporter just found out. Veteran AP political reporter Bob Lewis had a potential bombshell. Virginia gubernatorial candidate Terry McAuliffe lied to federal investigators. Only problem, it wasn't true. Within hours, the Associated Press issued a full retraction. Despite admitting he botched the story, the AP unceremoniously fired Lewis and two editors. That harsh outcome prompted other reporters to defend Lewis. We all make mistakes, said one. I'm hard-pressed to see how the AP did the right thing, said another. It all led the Pointer Institute to ask, which reporting errors will get one fired? Captain Sum Ting Wong, we too low. KTVU in San Francisco fired three reporters for falling for a hoax during its coverage of Asiana Flight 214. Are you following him? Yeah. Okay, we don't need you to do that. NBC fired reporters for misleading edits made to George Zimmerman's 911 call. Well, if we have information, an arrest has been made. Yeah. But no one got fired for mistaken reports over marathon bombing suspects. The individual mandate has been ruled unconstitutional. Or botching the Supreme Court's health care decision. So what errors get you fired? As Pointer concludes, it depends. Meanwhile, there's a petition circling now trying to get those reporters reinstated. If I were the AP, though, I'd have to take a really hard look at this one because there was the potential, and still is, even though they've retracted the story, of a libel lawsuit. Once you attach that kind of accusation to a prominent person's name, I realize he's a public figure, but that doesn't, you know, that doesn't, st that doesn't mean there wasn't, you know, it, it, wrongdoing. It, it's, they still could be charged. So I think that was what they looked at. They said this was, and the fact that it was fairly careless. The reporter, Bob Lewis, looked at this list, and there was the initials TM, and he made a leap, as far as we know. We don't know where he got the name Terry McAuliffe, but he made a leap off of a page that had these initials on it and attached Terry McAuliffe's name to it. That's my great frustration with the AP's handling of this. Um, first off, yes, journalists all over the place, myself included, we all make mistakes on occasion. Sometimes they're biggies. Most people keep their jobs. Um, but I want to know what happened inside the AP that led this to be published online. And I think the AP, by firing these three, probably believes it's taking firm, decisive action and putting <clears throat> the issue to rest. But they are not talking about sort of how the sausage got made. And I think in a case like this, they should. If a source gave them bad info, they don't deserve to be protected. And if it wasn't a source giving them bad info, but a breakdown of internal protocol, then they should share that with the public. We haven't gotten that yet. Hmm. I think we will get to the bottom of it. Uh, there are some reporters working on the kind of a behind the scenes story. One, I think just today, the Washington Post has been all over this because of their location. And uh, Paul Fari, who is the media analyst there, did a story. One of the things he suggested was that there had been pressure before on the leaders of the AP. I think they have a new, a new chairman there. And because there had been a terrible mistake at the AP on the marathon bombing. Uh, case where it was reported too early that there was a suspect. And they wanted to stop it because they saw this as kind of a chain reaction that had happened with a number of different mm. stories. I have thought about this quite a bit. <laughs> and I have to say, I don't have a problem with the firings. Um, it's, it's very tough punishment. It was a horrendous error. And we were talking, you were talking about some of the comparisons. I mean, a comparison I would make in the midst of a very high-profile political campaign is 60 Minutes coverage of, uh, of President Bush yeah. uh, with the National Guard documents that turned out to be almost certainly forged. And, you know, several people were pushed out of CBS as a result of that. And there were veteran people with very good reputations who lost their jobs as a result. Uh, you would like to think that a lifetime of good service, which apparently is the case with Bob Lewis, might insulate you from the ultimate penalty in a case like this. But this was such a, 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 an over-the-top error in a high-profile political campaign. 
and it doesn't seem like people did the elementary checking that you're supposed to do in these things. I hope he'll be okay, but he needs a new career beyond the AP at this point. Yeah, Emily, I think you cut right to the chase right off the bat here when you mentioned the libel angle. One of the ways in which an organization that finds itself in this situation can at least start to try to mitigate the damage is through quick, decisive action, apology, uh, potentially even the firing of indivi individuals responsible for it. That may be a factor here. I uh, know only of Bob Lewis's sterling reputation, but who knows? A lot of times, if there's a track record of issues with a reporter's work and it blows up in one instance, then that could lead to it. I will say this, though. Uh, in a, in a, at a time and place where Kathleen Sebelius can keep her job, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to believe anyone could be fired for anything. Yeah, but I mean, you know, he he took a leap into something. He he made a leap as far as we know from initials to a name. I mean, that you can't really compare that to a screwed up website. I mean, no, and it can't be compared to John King's gaffe or some of the others yeah, you mentioned. Throw, one, no, on one other point of comparison, remember when the Globe erroneously reported that uh, this guy who had worked on the Big Dig had tried to blow the whistle on safety problems and right. been ignored? And the guy turned out to be horribly compromised, and the story was largely bogus. We never really learned what happened. No one lost their jobs, and the Globe went on to do a whole bunch of, you know, they had done a bunch of good work mm -hmm. on the Big Dig previously. They continued to after that. Um, I, I feel like a little, you know, big mistakes get made. Well, there was a worse one, but, that Zantop murder up in New Hampshire, when they reported one. that yep. Zantop Health was having an affair. Nobody lost their job over that. That was a real that bad one. That was really bad.